Scientists are known to be a rational bunch. They won't believe anything unless they see some good old empirical evidence and scientific proof to back it up. Most of the time, anyway. Because there are truly some things out there that science cannot explain, including these objects that have even the men and women of physics, biology, and chemistry running for the hills. From the bizarre m chair to the car that the movie icon, here's 20 cursed objects that scientists fear. <sighs> Number 20. The Busby Stoop Chair. The Busby's stoop chair, also called the dead man's chair, is a wooden chair that's said to be haunted because Mr. Thomas Busby cursed it before he was hung in North Yorkshire, England in 1702. After a number of deaths were linked to people sitting in the chair, the landlord gave it to the Thirsk Museum because, yeah, why not kill some museum visitors instead of your own family members? Thomas Busby was caught, tried, and sentenced to death in 1702 for killing his father-in-law, Daniel Audie. Audie and Busby were making fake coins and running other illegal businesses when they got into a fight about it, which led to Audie's death at the hands of Busby. One story says that Busby cursed the chair on his way to the gallows, while another says that he cursed it while drunk and sitting in it when he was caught. Busby was hung near the crossroads in Sand Hutton, next to an inn that was later renamed the Busby Stoop Inn. Busby's ghost was said to haunt the place where he was killed, which is now a roundabout at the intersection of two busy roads. Locals say that during World War II, Canadian pilots from the nearby base at Skipton on Swale used to hang out at the inn. Those who sat in the chair never came back from missions over continental Europe. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or the centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. Here's the story of a man from Scotland who thought it would be cool to collect some cursed objects that he found in a strange traveling fair. He picked up this doll and this other thing that looks like a head in a jar for a pretty cheap price. But soon he realized it wasn't such a bargain. Both of these objects would talk to him while he was asleep and convince him to go out and act like he was insane during the day. If two objects talking to you makes you act weird, I'd say you are insane. He didn't even know why he was doing it, and he was getting in a lot of trouble. Evidently, he set up a camera in his room and caught the real culprits. The police took the evil items away, and he was finally free from the curse. Where do you think the police put these cursed objects? Do you think there's anyone out there who could lift the curse? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag rare topic, and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now, on to the next topic. Number 19. James Dean's Little Bastard James Dean called his silver Porsche 550 Spider, in which he died in an accident in 1955, Little Bastard. After that, George Barris, who made hot rods, bought the car and planned to sell it for parts. When the car fell off the jacks and crushed his legs, the curse story was born. It's said that the curse spread as parts of the car were sold. A crash killed a doctor who bought the engine, and another crash severely injured a person who bought the transmission. All of the tires that little bastard sold blew out at the same time, sending people who bought them to the hospital. While the car's shell was being moved, the truck that was carrying it crashed, killing the driver. From there, someone stole the shell, and Little Bastard's curse stopped because no one knew where it was. In fact, Little Bastard had been causing trouble almost since Dean bought it. Dean met British actor Alec Guinness in Los Angeles a week before the crash that killed him. When Guinness saw the Porsche, he felt like something bad was going to happen. He would later write about it in his diary. Dean was driving along Route 46 at about 85 miles per hour when a young student from California Polytechnic State University named Donald Turnspeed, who was driving a Ford Tudor, decided to make a sudden turn onto Route 41. The impact sent the Ford almost 40 feet down the road and threw the Porsche into a huge crash. Dean was declared dead at 6.20 p.m. when he got to the Paso Robles War Memorial Hospital. Number 18. The Bassano Vase 
People say that the Bassano vase is the most cursed vase in the world, and that a cloud of death has always hung over it. Nobody knows where the curse came from, but every person who has ever owned the vase has said it is curse. It's a silver vase from the 15th century, made in a simple but elegant Italian style. It was given to a bride in Naples, Italy the night before her wedding. The sad bride didn't make it to her wedding because she died the night before. A family member took the vase but he died soon after. Each person who inherited the vase died until a priest came to get rid of the demons and bury the cursed vase. It slept for 300 years, until 1988 when it came back to do much more damage. It was found and dug up, and the young man who found it was shocked to find a letter inside that said, Beware, this vase brings death. The man decided it would be best to sell it, which he did for about $2,500. The dead started to pile up again, so five consecutive owners called the police and asked them to take it away. Since then, no one's seen it, but it's still out there. Number 17. The Crying Boy Painting the Crying Boy is a print made from a painting by Italian artist named Giovanni Bragolin. This is actually a fake name that the painter Bruno Amarillo used. There's many different versions of this painting, and many of them show little boys or girls crying. Even though the picture's well known, there's also rumors that it's cursed. A firefighter from Essex said that copies of the picture were often found in the wreckage of destroyed buildings. But the painting was the only thing left undamaged. Enough people believed the painting to be cursed that a British newspaper started planning large bonfires of the paintings in the hope of saving the country from demonic possession. After tests, researchers found that the prints had been treated with an unusual fire retardant varnish, and that the string holding the painting to the wall would often break first. This would cause the painting to fall face down onto the floor, protecting it from the flames, and explaining why pictures were often found undamaged. Number 16. The Debuck Box a Jewish creature called a debuck is said to haunt the debuck box, which is a wine cabinet. The box became well known after its owner, Kevin Manis, sold it on eBay with a description that included a story about Jewish Holocaust survivors and paranormal claims. A scary movie called The Possession, which came out in 2012, was based on Manis' story. In 2003, Kevin Manis, a writer and owner of a business that fixes up old furniture in Portland, Oregon, bought the cabinet at a local attorney's yard sale and started writing a story about it. Manis said he carved something into the back of it. The stone in the box is also something that he himself made. He admits fully that he created the Dubyuk box, including the name and the creative story to go with it on eBay. According to this story, the original owner of the cabinet was a Holocaust survivor in Poland, who said that it was haunted by the evil spirit of a Dubyuk, and had supernatural powers, and was the cause of his bad luck and nightmares, according to the auction description written by Manus. When the item was sold again, the new owners told the same story as Manus and added their own story as a strange phenomenon, which has now made this into a legendary cursed object. It's kind of like the Disney version of a cursed object. Number 15. The Hands Resist Him Painting the Hands Resist Him is a piece of art by Bill Stoneham, and it was made in 1972. It shows a small child and a girl doll standing in front of a glass panel door that's being pushed against by several hands. Stoneham says the boy is based on a picture of himself when he was five years old. The doll is a guide who will walk with the child through the doorway, which is the line between the real world and the world of dreams. The hands in the title represent different lives or possibilities. When the artwork was put up for sale on eBay in February of 2000, with a description saying it was haunted, it became the subject of an urban legend and a popular internet meme. Number 14. The Woman from Lem Statue Most people who see a strange statue called Goddess of Death don't live long enough to tell you about it. In Lem, Cyprus in 1878, this strange statue was found, and it dates back to 3500 BC. At first, it was thought to be a goddess of fertility statue. Everyone thought it was a great find, but as time went on, they discovered why it had been thrown away so long ago. 
It was just the kind of thing that nobody wanted. The family who had the statue when it was first rediscovered died, only six years after they got it. Now, I could understand one or two deaths, but an entire family? In the end, another wealthy family found the statue and bought it for their collection. Again, the same thing happened, but it wasn't until the end of the story. It went back to being owned by two families, and you guessed it, both of those families died soon after. Is it possible that the monument to the cursed ladies of Lem is made of some material that makes people sick? It's possible, but it doesn't explain why family members have died who weren't even near the monument. Could the statue have some kind of power? Maybe because it wasn't meant to be moved from where it was put? We may never know, but if you see this statue on sale for cheap, don't buy it. Number 13. The Orphan's Storybook now, let's take a look at a wild tale of beauty, excitement, and cruelty from Spain's imperial power that's been published for the first time 400 years after it was written. Historia del Huerfano, also called the Orphan Story, tells the story of a 14-year-old Spaniard who leaves Granada to find his fortune in the Americas. Its main character travels all over the Spanish Empire, from the high society parties of Lima to the evil minds of Potos. He sees Sir Francis Drake invade Puerto Rico and Cadiz fall. After love stories, a shipwreck, and a run-in with pirates, the soldier missionary finally gets to accept the peace of monastic life in Peru's capital. Sounds pretty great, right? Well, here's the catch. This book is cursed, and if you read it, you're gonna be in big trouble. It was supposed to be published under the name Andre de Leon in 1621, but it never came out. Its author may have been afraid that it would cause him problems, as he started a religious career that would lead to him becoming the vice royalty of Sicily. In 1965, a Spanish teacher found the manuscript in the archives of the Hispanic Society of America, and it was finally published. But since then, it's believed that anyone who reads it will suffer terrible misfortune. Number 12. The Terracotta Army It was a normal death in modern China, where things move so quickly and life isn't necessarily very valued. Since Wang Puzi didn't have enough money to pay for medical treatment, he waited until his children had left home before putting a noose around his neck and killing himself. Before he killed himself, Wang's life was anything but normal. He was part of a group of seven laborers who in 1974 found the 2,200-year-old terracotta army while digging a well on a collective farm in Yang Village. This was the most valuable archaeological find ever. Since their discovery, millions of people have gone to Xi'an, which is in the northwest part of China. Many businesses and government officials are said to have gotten rich because of this. The farmers who found the buried army, on the other hand, have found the warriors to be more of a curse than a blessing. Instead of getting to enjoy benefits of finding the treasures, they're confused by the terracotta soldiers' apparent greed and destructive power. First, the government took away their farms, even though they were the ones who actually found the treasure. They were told to move away. Then many of them began to suffer mysterious illnesses. On the other hand, the local villagers want credit to go to the farmers who found the terracotta army, but they've been pushed aside so the central government can take all the glory for their hard work. And it seems like they're now leading a cursed life too. Number 11. The Great Bed of Ware, England. This oak bed is now safe and at the V&A Museum in London. It's thought that carpenter Jonas Fosbrook made it for King Edward IV in the 15th century. The bed is carved with patterns from European Renaissance art, like many other things from that time. It used to be brightly painted, and you can still see some of those colors on the figures on the bedhead. The design of the marquetry panels from the work of the Dutch artist Hans Vredemann de Vries. The panels were probably made by English craftsmen in London during the late Elizabethan period. In the end, the kings wanted new beds. It was taken away by garbage men from outside the palace and put in several inns around Ware. Pretty cool novelty to sleep in the king's old bed in a local inn. At least it would have been cool if the bed wasn't cursed. By the 1800s, the bed had been moved from the White Hart Inn to another inn in Ware called the Saracen's Head. Commoners sleeping in it apparently made Fossbrook's ghost very angry, and many people went to bed in it only to never wake up in the morning. The bed's history and whether or not it's haunted are up for debate, but it was famous enough to be mentioned in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night and Byron's Don Juan. 
Number 10. The Dark Mirror This mysterious mirror, which seems to move on its own, is the world's only mobile museum of the unexplained. The original owner bought it at a psychic fair near Columbus, which is where the museum eventually got it from years later after that owner died. The original owner said that when they looked into the dark reflection of the scary mirror, they saw some pretty scary things. The museum says that visitors have also said they saw unsettling things like their own dead bodies when they looked into the reflective glass. The traveling museum of the paranormal and occult is the world's only mobile museum of the unexplained. It has hundreds of haunted, historical, and supernaturally important artifacts. The roving exhibition is expertly put together by Dana and Greg Newkirk, who are well-known paranormal researchers. The Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult gives people access to evidence of the supernatural in a way that has never really been done before. It does this by giving away the only collection of haunted objects that have been studied independently. This takes famous paranormal items out of the hands of private collectors and puts them directly into the hands of the people who are interested in the wide world of the strange and unexplained. But be warned, if you look into this mirror, you might see things that you wish you never had. Number 9. Robert the Doll Here's something about Robert the Doll that most people would agree is true. He's terrifying. Robert lives at the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida, and he's 117 years old. Even though he looks like a little boy in a sailor suit, his face isn't very human. His small nose looks like it has two holes in it. He has brown marks on his body that look like scars. His eyes are black and very sharp. He has a mean grin on his face, and on his lap, he has his own toy. A dog with big eyes that pop out, and a tongue that hangs out of its mouth in a manner that looks totally like he's crazy. People also say Robert is haunted, and has caused car accidents, broken bones, job loss, divorce, and lots of other bad stuff. Before Robert moved to the museum in 1994, he belonged to Robert Eugene Otto, a strange artist from a well-known family in Key West. According to the story, when Otto was young, he started to blame bad things on the doll. This could have been laughed off as childish storytelling, but as Otto and Robert got older, even adults started to notice strange things. Many museum visitors today blame bad things that happened after their visit on not respecting Robert, or even being rude to him, and they write to ask for forgiveness. Others come to him for advice or to put a curse on people who have hurt them. Number 8. The Unlucky Mummy, England the famous ship, the Titanic, is said to have sunk because of a curse from an Egyptian mummy, not just a random iceberg. More than 1,500 people drowned in the most famous disaster in history, and many people think that the cursed mummy on board the unsinkable ship caused it to sink. This mummy was bought by the British Museum in 1889. Researchers and staff at the museum called it the unlucky mummy immediately. The mummy was of the Princess of Amun-Ra, her coffin and mummy were bought by a British man who died not long after they arrived in England. After that, it was owned by several other people, and many of them also had bad luck. In the end, even the British Museum didn't want it anymore, so they gave it to an American collector who didn't believe in curses. So it was put on the Titanic and sent to its new home. It almost got there, but it didn't quite make it, of course. And now it's at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Just kidding, there actually wasn't a mummy on the Titanic. It turns out that this is a rumor that's false. When you look at the details of the facts, the dates don't even line up. Like, the person who bought the mummy from the people who discovered it in Egypt died 30 years before the Titanic was even built. But people do love this story, it's a popular one, even though it's fake. Number 7. The Dead Mother Painting by Edvard Munch Edvard Munch is known for his dark, moody, expressionist paintings like The Scream, but only one of his works is haunted. People say that The Dead Mother, which Munch painted in honor of his mother, who died of tuberculosis, still shows signs of its sad past. As people move around her, the little girl's eyes follow them, and some people can hear the sheets on the dead mother's bed wrestling as they stand close. The Scream, Munch's most famous piece, 
has become one of the most famous images in Western art due to its depiction of modern psychological distress. Munch's own childhood was filled with illness, death, and the fear that he developed the mental illness that ran in his family. Even as his fame and wealth grew, he never felt emotionally stable. He thought about marriage for a short time, but he couldn't make a decision. In 1908, he had a mental breakdown that made him stop drinking. After that, he was pleased that the people of Christiania admired him more and more, and that he was getting more attention in the city's museums. In his later years, he finally worked alone and in peace, away from his demons. Even though his works were banned in the parts of Europe that the Nazis controlled, most of them made it through World War II, leaving him a spectacular and haunting legacy. Number 6. The Hope Diamond the Hope Diamond is a famous Indian gem that's rumored to be cursed. The record of who owned this diamond goes back 400 years, and its blue color, which is from traces of boron, is well known worldwide. This is a stone that came from the famous Kohler mine in Telangana. When French gem trader Jean-Baptiste Tavanier bought the stone in 1666, it was called the Tavanier Blue. When he sold it to King Louis XIV in 1668, it was cut and renamed the French Blue. During the French Revolution, however, it was stolen and recut. It became known as the Hope Diamond when a British banking family named Hope founded in 1839. It was then brought to the US where a socialite and a few other people owned it until 1958 when it was given to the National Museum of Natural History of the United States. It's said that this diamond was taken from the eye of a statue of Sita, the wife of Rama, the seventh incarnation of Vishnu. Because of this, it's said to be cursed and many of its owners have died tragic deaths. Its curse has been talked about in the news for many years, and it looks like a very dangerous thing to own. Number 5. Otzi Otzi the Iceman was a warrior from long ago, who was found in 1991 in the highlands of the Alps. The Iceman was found with his arms in a strange position, which some people saw as a sign of a curse. We know a lot about Otzi's life, like the fact that he was from a time when acupuncture was used to treat illness. But it doesn't look like he likes being bothered since seven people who had something to do with his discovery have already died in mysterious ways. Helmut Simon, a 67-year-old German tourist who found the body, died in a freak snowstorm near the spot where he found the body. Ooh, that's creepy. It's like he died in the same way that Otzi did. On the day that Helmut was buried, another member died and the number of deaths kept going up. Many people died in ways that were related to the Iceman, like when they were in car accidents on their way to give lectures about Otzi. Dr. Tom Loy is last, but not least. Loy used DNA to put together the Stone Age story of how Otzi died and disproved the idea that he died alone because there were small amounts of human blood on his clothes. The discovery was very important, and Loy was about to write a book about it when he died at his home in Brisbane at the age of 63. Number 4. Portrait of Samantha King by Richard King This painting by Richard King looks happy, but there's actually a scary story behind it. It hangs in the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas. So the story goes, the young girl in King's painting is Samantha Houston, the daughter of a U.S. senator who died at the Driscoll when she fell from a window. Visitors today say that just looking at the painting makes them feel like they're falling down a flight of stairs. Some people say they've seen Samantha's ghost in the hotel hallways, and others say that if you look at the painting long enough, Samantha's face will change shape. As with any good legend, the haunting backstory of the painting is a mix of fact and fiction. Willow Smook looked into the painting's history and came to the conclusion that King's work is a copy of Love Letters by Charles Trevor Garland. But I guess try telling that to the Driscoll guests who stood in front of this painting forever and say they saw real ghosts. I mean, the whole thing about it being a copy of another piece of work doesn't really like add any credence, but it also doesn't take away the possibility of it being haunted as hell. Number 3. King Tut's Tomb Howard Carter, a British archaeologist, found the tomb of the pharaoh Tutankhamun, who died in 1323 BC. When he was about 18 years old in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt, just across the Nile from Luxor. From the 1600s BC to the 1100s BC, all pharaohs were buried there. 
Most of the tombs have been raided since they were first built, and Tutankhamun's was the first to be almost completely untouched. The fifth Earl of Carnarvon, an amateur Egyptologist who helped pay for the project, went with Carter and his team into the tombs. There they found the young pharaoh's mummified body and a lot of religious objects, wall paintings, and inscriptions, as well as things that he'd need in the afterlife. The news of the discovery spread around the world, and people began to say that anyone who broke into a pharaoh's tomb would be cursed. Lord Carnarvon died in Cairo at the age of 56, and the city's lights mysteriously all went out soon after. This caused a lot of people to wonder what was going on. Arthur Conan Doyle told the American press that Carnarvon's death could have been caused by a spirit that priests made to protect the mummy. He called this spirit an evil elemental. Even though there was no curse in the tomb, the story kept going because different members of Carter's team and real or thought to be visitors to the site died over the years, especially in violent or strange ways. Prince Ali Kemal Fami Bey of Egypt was shot dead by his wife in 1923. Sir Archibald Douglas Raid, who supposedly x-rayed the mummy and died mysteriously in 1924. Sir Lee Stack, who was the Governor General of the Sudan, was killed in Cairo in 1924. Arthur Mace, who worked on Carter's excavation team and was said to have died of arsenic poisoning in 1928. And that's not a full list! And of course, Carter himself died relatively young of an unexpected heart attack. This is the real mummy's curse. Number 2. Elmo knows your name! Here's one more reason why I don't like dolls. Something about the thought of these little jerks coming to life is just too, too terrifying to bear. But what's worse than the Robert doll is one that looks all cute and cuddly, like Elmo for example. <laughs> What could go wrong with a Cuddle Me Elmo? Well, a two-year-old boy in Florida named James came close to being killed by his Elmo Knows Your Name doll, which kept saying, KILL JAMES! Now that's just plain weird. This Elmo can remember your child's name and can be set up to repeat phrases. Who knows, maybe it was just a cruel joke by a factory worker. Fisher Price is looking into the matter. The Sesame Street character now says, KILL JAMES! in a sing-song voice when you squeeze its fuzzy belly. James' mother, Melissa Bowman, said, It's not something you would think would ever come out of a toy, but when I found out, I was pretty upset. Yeah, Melissa, I would have been upset too. Number 1. Piece of Uluru Rock Uluru is Australia's most well-known rock, and 300,000 people visit the World Heritage List site every year. Some of these visitors, unfortunately, feel like they want to take more home with them than just photos and memories. They take a piece of the rock with them as a souvenir. Not only does this make you a huge jerk, it's unethical and bad for the environment, but many people also believe the rocks they take are cursed. Even though the original custodians, the Anangu, are not aware of any curse, they agree that taking rocks from the area is a huge insult to their beliefs and culture. And it can also cost you a lot. Tourists who try to take things from the national park can get fined up to 8,500 Australian dollars. Some tourists who carelessly took pieces of the sacred landmark home with them had a string of bad luck. Several hundred travelers sent their souvenirs back every year, either out of guilt or from the bad luck they experienced. The Anagu get a package of returned rocks, seeds, twigs, sand, or pebbles almost every day of the year. It's actually a pretty big task for them to handle. So many rocks have been sent back that since 2004 they've been called sorry rocks. Most of the packages come with an explanation of the bad luck and a sincere apology for taking the rocks. So it's best to leave sacred rocks alone, especially if they might be cursed. So after seeing this list, do you believe in cursed objects? What would you do if Elmo threatened to murder you? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.